Hey everyone, it's Isidore the Hedge Witch back again, and today I am going to be talking to you about animal magic. This is one of my favourite things because, for one, I spend a lot of time with animals, I work with animals a lot more than I probably work with people these days especially, but animal magic is really important because you're actually working with the spirit of the animal rather than the actual animal itself. Now, this can be achieved many ways. You can actually envision the animal. I, I'm not talking about spirit animals here, so please don't jump to that conclusion. Um, and talking about literally using the energy of a specific animal for a specific purpose. So you can envision it, you can have a piece of fur or something from that animal. Uh, me, I prefer to work with skulls especially, I tend to have a lot of them. The thing about this is obviously an animal has had to die to be able to get this item. I personally do not go with any animal that's died an unnatural death. I will only ever work with an animal that has died a natural death because if you're actually killing the animal to do something, you're not really honouring its spirit because you're kind of the one that got it there in the first place. So I have this awesome monkey skull that I use, especially for like mischievous workings and things that a lot of cleverness or dexterity is involved in. I also have, for instance, oh, this one's actually a little bit delicate. I have a gorgeous fox skull, which is about the cunning energy and that kind of thing. And so I love the fox skull. I love the kind of fox energy because they're incredibly smart and cheeky creatures. So you can use it for a lot of those kinds of energetic workings as far as that goes. Also, you may want to work with cats, for instance. Cats especially are like one of the traditional familiars, so they work really closely with witchcraft. Cats are also incredibly intelligent and they're the ones that you really sort of connect in with a lot of psychic stuff. So you may want to work with cat energy in that case. Um, dogs, incredibly healing, uh, a lot of really high energy, a very, very loyal energy. So if you're working in spell work and things associated with that, a dog skull might be really easy to go for. Or a piece of fur. Things like that, teeth even. Um, the way you might want to work it into your spell work is just have the skull nearby, or so for me I'm going to say skull, but for you it's whatever it is, nearby when you're doing your spell work, so maybe pop it on your altar in a sort of special place while you're doing it. Otherwise you may wish to hold it while you're doing it. You may wish to even use whatever it is as an ingredient in the spell, especially mojo bags work really well for actually including a piece of whichever animal it is in the mojo bag. Other than that, if you're just doing it for like a meditative purpose, you may wish to actually sit and hold it. I love you know, sort of sitting and holding things in my lap when I'm doing meditational work. Otherwise, yeah, the possibilities really are endless. I sometimes wear pieces of the animals, especially the raven, because that's my specific animal that I work with. Um, but yeah, possibilities are absolutely endless. You can have an icon of it, you know, I'm, I'm going on now. But anyway, the idea is that animal magic brings a really important part of wild energy into whatever you're doing. And each and every animal is really specific. If you're unsure what the actual use of a specific animal is, just think about that animal's nature. What makes that animal its particular unique self? And that's the energy that you'll be bringing into whatever you're doing. As I mentioned, try to avoid cruel methods of getting the animal pieces or whatever it is. You know, don't go pulling out teeth. Don't go declawing things because that's horrible for one. Don't go hunting. It needs to be natural death things. With that though, I will for instance use like roadkill animals because they have died a natural death even if it's not actually like that, it's because they've been hit by a car. However, I do tend to sort of say try and get them as nice and gentle as you can. Um, fur is always the easiest way to work with things. It's something that the animal generally sheds of its own accord. And things like antlers and stuff that tend to get shed, not horns, horns are actually bone inside. But the antlers that tend to shed, they are a really amazing thing to use as well. So if you can get some natural antlers that have actually been taken, like have fallen off of the animal, they're actually pretty good as well. 
So hopefully you liked that kind of quick introduction to animal magic. If you do have any more questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. I just try to do a like rough overview and then see what people actually want to know about in depth. Um, if you have any of those questions, feel free to email me um, or you can contact me through the website, which is www.3marigna.com. And I shall talk to you all again soon. Thank you so much for listening.